Hi, and uh, welcome to the second installment of Frank and Mary in Westboro. And you all know Shelby Marshall. Some, some of you know me. I'm, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an I'm a elder law attorney. And Shelby and I are doing a series of shows for over a year. Uh, we started last month on senior issues that are of importance. And, and I know Shelby and I had talked about the fact that several of those issues come out of the Dementia Friendly Initiative in which you had been involved yeah. over, the la over the previous year, yes. right? Yes. Which was in which you were trying to really kind of formulate what the town, what could really be helpful to folks in the town, right. among, other, among others, t folks who have, who have dementia. Right. And one of the issues that I remember you were talking about right off the top was this, this notion of focusing on honoring choices, mm -hmm. which is like, well, what is that exactly, right? And so to talk about that and get a sense of the background for that, you suggested that we invite our friend Ellen D. Paola. So why don't you introduce yes. Ellen, and then we'll just kind of talk about okay. honoring choices. How's Excellent. That? Well, thank you, Arthur. It's great to be hosting again here today. And welcome, Ellen. Um, mm -hmm. I will allow you to introduce yourself with all of your credentials, um, but it's a pleasure to have you. Uh, you've established an amazing program that is now you know, started with a concept, really, mm -hmm. and now is really kind of proliferating throughout uh, many parts of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. So first of all, tell us about who you are and a little bit about your background. Yeah, like, like well, what are you doing this like, stuff? Right? How did you yeah. end up doing this? How did I do this? Yeah. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's been a pleasure to, to work with you and it, both a little bit as partners, actually, uh, in this endeavor. So I came to this work as an attorney, actually, um, as a guardianship attorney, and I uh, worked a lot with um, different populations, pro bono populations, and generally older folks in Massachusetts. And we, as we uh, came to learn that they needed guardianship, um, it was really interesting to me to be able to talk to clients about how did we get here. Because as you know, that if um, uh, typically if people do a simple healthcare proxy and they assign somebody to, to, to make decisions for them, then uh, that person can do that right throughout their lifetime. And if we don't do that in Massachusetts, then if somebody becomes incapacitated, meaning they can't make decisions for themselves any longer, Medi there's medical a medical person. condition, yeah. there's a medical condition that exists where people lose that ability or maybe never have that ability, mm -hmm. um, the court will step in to protect mm -hmm. folks. And that's where guardianship comes in. Mm -hmm. And that court will help uh, identify a guardian. Sometimes it's just the husband and the wife mm -hmm. or someone in the family and um, they'll be able then to take over that role mm -hmm. of advocating for people. And, and, and by the way, so once again, as a person who's gone yeah. through that process, not mm -hmm. nearly the number of times that you did, mm -hmm. but just <laughs> enough to know how bad it is. Yeah. Could you just give people a sense mm -hmm. in a minute? Sure. How does the guardianship process work mm -hmm. right. so that they get a sense of why they don't want to be there? Yeah. Right. And, and that, was the, that was so interesting to me, is how many people I was working with who didn't have to be in this mm -hmm. situation. So imagine a couple who's been married for 45 and 50 years, who just helped each other through everything. Mm -hmm. But what, let's say the gentleman and the husband in that situation developed a medical condition, like a stroke or, mm -hmm. or maybe advanced Alzheimer's, and couldn't make decisions any right. longer. Because he hadn't done that healthcare proxy, once you lose that ability, as you know, you can't do it then. Right. Um, and so you're and, kind and, of stuck. And maybe Alzheimer's even, it can kind of sneak up on you. Right. But a stroke, it's like that. It's right? instant, right, right, right. right. And that's what really <laughs> frightens families. Yeah. Because there's such a loss of control all right. of a sudden. And, and then what do you have to do? If I, so I'm the yeah. wife now. What, yeah. what do I have to do to become that person's yeah. And that's what's so difficult, mm -hmm. is to be able then to, usually people have to hire an attorney. Even mm -hmm. though you can do this process yourself, it's hard mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. It costs money to do. It's a lot of time, too. Even mm -hmm. though... Um, you, you will ask the judge, you'll petition the judge to say, I'd like to be my husband's guardian. <laughs> Such a tough thing after so many years of marriage. And then where after much paperwork and time and money. Um, not, you, not to mention going to court. Right, right. You go to court. You have to go to that. court. And that's, yeah. that's where I really did a lot of talking with folks because even though it can be a five or ten minute in front of the judge, you are there for four and five hours mm -hmm. waiting for that hearing. Sure. So really stressful for families, especially when one member has such complicated medical mm -hmm. conditions at the time. So the, the judge will look at the family, look at the medical history. There's a medical certificate that comes in. You know, again, very hard to co have to go through this when somebody's sick. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and time. And time like and months. money. Right. Yeah. And again, yeah. 
all avoidable with a five minute healthcare proxy. So, so two questions sort of on that for mm -hmm. our viewers. So one, if you can speak to the difference between guardianship and conservatorship, mm -hmm. right? And how those sort of track differently. Right. And then what is this healthcare proxy thing? Let's right. not assume folks yeah. know what that no, is. And we'll, we can talk about that. But if we just go back to guardianship, say yeah. you didn't do two things. There's actually two things. Mm -hmm. It's a great question. If you didn't appoint an, as someone to be your agent in a legal document called a healthcare proxy, then if you become unable to make decisions, you, we go to guardianship in Massachusetts. We have the court step in for the safety of the people. Of course. Yeah. You know, so the cousin from Ohio who you've never seen in 50 years doesn't come it's in and take, sudden interested. Yeah, take yeah. charge of your life. Um, then that's guardianship. The other thing that's important, as you know, Arthur, in Massachusetts, is to appoint somebody to be your financial decision maker. Mm -hmm. okay. Because if you lose that capacity to, or that ability to make financial decisions, what happens in Massachusetts is your bank accounts will lock down, right. you know, right. and, and if you haven't made other provisions. So either, um, you know, even having someone in your family who's not on your accounts be able to pay for your care becomes right. impossible. Right. And that's when we go to a court process called conservatorship. Mm -hmm. And this, quite frankly, is even worse. Right, this is actually course. very expensive. It's hundreds and hundreds of dollars in time mm -hmm. to be able to do this. Right. So we can avoid both of those things. Um, right. And that's what Honoring Choices, that's how it came about, quite frankly, just right. listening to the stories of all these families and thinking, they don't know their simple rights here. Yeah. And what they told us was really interesting, which is that they didn't actually know where to find documents. If they didn't want to hire an attorney, and many people don't, apologies to you and me, but that was true for a healthcare proxy. You know, where do we find these documents? Right. So that's what Honoring Choices was about. We wanted to do two things. Put these free documents up on the website so anybody could use them, Fantastic. and then to give these documents to people, quite frankly, like Shelby, who mm -hmm. runs an organization right at home who interfaces with folks every day mm -hmm. so that she could use the tools Right. And so we have now thousands, actually, of community partners like you across the state. Because you actually started this, this, this the, the Massachusetts piece of honoring choices, That's right? That's right, five and, years ago. I and think. you said there were a few of these, if I recall correctly, you want some in other states. Yeah, there's, a, right. it, it's, it, there's it's, about nine of them. But this is yeah. Massachusetts is unique because we're not focused. Always. <laughs> That's, That's what I've person, learned. Right? And we're not, it's because we're, we're not focused on end-of-life care here. Mm. But we're saying, look, you have a right at 18 years yeah, old so to, to make decisions for yourself. And one of the first decisions is to say, hey, if I get sick tomorrow, mm -hmm. if I go and play soccer and get hit on the head and I'm not able to communicate with my doctors, I need an advocate. I need a healthcare proxy to step up just to help me get that care while I'm recovering. Because by the way, if I'm 18, my mother can't do that. That's right. And that's right. what a lot of mothers and children <laughs> find out the hard way. Right. 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 Um, and you make yeah. a great point, Ellen, that you know when we think about healthcare proxies, and when I've traditionally thought about it, and I think most of me, even our viewers, we think immediately it's end of life care. Right. Who's gonna make that decision, that critical decision mm -hmm. of life support or what have you, but to your point that you just made, mm -hmm. this is really about healthcare planning throughout the continuum of when we're adults. Exactly. And, and, it, and it is so right. important. So for example, mm -hmm. families who are have children going away to college, right? And they're turning 18 and they're now going to school in Ohio, mm -hmm. right? And God forbid something happens, even for a short period of time. We're not even talking about kind of where, you know, mm -hmm. they're in, incapacitated mm -hmm. for a long time, but they can be incapacitated because to your point, they, you know, kind of got hit on the head with a soccer, soccer ball. They're, you know, right. kind of, you know, concussion, mm -hmm. what have you. They're in the infirmary. Exactly. What do we do? Exactly. There's no one to call. So the importance yeah. of that healthcare proxy so that a, a physician, a facility, a hospital can say, okay, this person has one. Right. And and it's whomever it is That's right. um, yeah. gives everyone a comfort level that they're talking because HIPAA, of course, is very important, mm -hmm. right? You know, health mm -hmm. health insurance, uh, I mean, right. that, uh, Privacy Act. So, yeah. the health insurance account. I forgot it. Privacy now. Portability. And portability and Accountability Act. <laughs> HIPAA. Yeah. Yes. Right. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Hippo. Hippo. Right. Whatever yeah. it is. <laughs> Yeah, so, and, and oh, it's a, no, no, and it's something actually I found out as a mother, quite frankly, yeah. maybe seven years ago when my son went off to college, he was on the rugby field in Connecticut, mm -hmm. he got hit on the head, Love his rugby. friends, <laughs> yeah, I'm an extra his player. friend, me too, his friends brought him to the hospital, and when I called as a mom, the hospital, because I couldn't call the school, it was Saturday, right. I said, I, you know, I hear my son is there, the response was, we can't tell you, oh, we can't wow. tell you who's here, we can't tell you his condition, because 
we don't know who you are. We don't know who you are. Wow. Yeah. Right. And so that's right. why having that healthcare proxy at 18 and above is really important. And for us, it yeah. really is about getting the care you need when you need it. You know. So, so I want to get back to the mm -hmm. well. How do you carry around this healthcare proxy thing? Because you've got a great little tool and a card, which we'll talk about uh, mm -hmm. in a minute. That's part of the kit. But when we think of the healthcare proxy, and you know, I'm surrounded here by attorneys, which makes me feel very safe. By <laughs> the way, feel uh, so nervous. <laughs> yes, my palms right. are sweating. Oh my God! Yeah. Um, but you know, we think mm -hmm. of it. It's it. It becomes a legal document. But you actually don't need an attorney to complete it, right? Can you, you talk a little bit about you that? You don't. Yeah, and that's what's lovely about the law in Massachusetts. When it comes to this, at least this one document, it really says you have the right to do this at 18. You can do it yourself. It takes uh, really five minutes to do. You need basically need two witnesses, right, mm -hmm. Arthur? And you could speak to this too. Right. And they can't be the person that you're naming. Right. right. It just can't right. be your agent, can't be your alternate agent. Mm -hmm. Right. But you can sit and down. And if you're in the hospital, it can't be one of the employees. That's right. right. That's exactly right. right. Yeah. Unless they're related to you. Right. Yes. That's right. great. He knows wow. the law. Oh, know. That's, <laughs> that's a piece of trivia for you. Pretty good. Right? There you go. But it's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we go around the state. In fact, we were just at um, some offices, at uh, some employment offices, because their employers say, this is an employee benefit for mm, people. We want to help. So we did a roundtable lunch, and everybody who wanted to do a healthcare proxy could do it. Fantastic. And what was fun is that they knew who their agent was, mm -hmm. and they, they knew who they wanted to write down. And then we just sat at tables, and co-workers helped each other witness nice. the documents. Oh, because right the they can yeah, be each other's right witnesses. Yeah, That's it's, a great idea. It's as simple That's as that. That's a great idea. Yeah. And we've been doing this regularly at the Council on Aging. Yes. Same thing. Yep. We have everybody come in. We talk about this document. If people are ready, and only if they're ready, and the, or else they take it home and they talk to their family about right. it, we'll sign it right there. Sure. And, and neighbors help neighbors. Great. So tell us a little bit, to, so the Honoring Choices component has this healthcare proxy. That's sort mm -hmm. of what I think of as, as one of the part ones. Mm -hmm. I know there are multiple steps of the program since I've been through the training. Tell us about the other piece, which is yeah. you know so important as yeah, well. Yeah, personal directive of living will, and, and Arthur can speak to this, how important this piece is too. Um, so in this state, which is different from most other states. Again. Again. <laughs> and, and it can get really confusing for people when they go online and they think, okay, all I need is a living will, and or, or all I need is a proxy. And in this state, it's really two documents I would recommend, and then certainly there's five altogether, but the first sure. two, and what everybody can download from the Honor Choices website for free, is Which, the by the way, proxy. I think we can put up after we yes. provide yes. A, on the bottom. So we'll have that, yeah. Maybe not choices flash. Maybe yeah. 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 not but, flashing. But like so that everybody can reach the website. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Very easy. Yeah. Yeah. So there's the healthcare proxy, and that does one thing we tell people. You get to pick someone to be your advocate, mm -hmm. 18 and older, and then by putting that person's name in this document, you give them the power to make decisions for you. Mm -hmm. But that's all you do. If. If. You're incapacitated. Right. Yes, that's right. If, Only at if that your point. doctor says you're incapacitated. And that's an right. important point. Your doctor has to do this. And it's then if your doctor, you know, once again with the kid with the, the hit the Rocky, the, yeah. the rugby kid. Yeah. So yeah. if he's better, mm -hmm. and the, then the doctor says he's better now, yeah. well then the healthcare proxy's power ends. So it's just during that period that he's really incapacitated. And that's a right. really important point for, yeah. to know because yeah, a lot of people don't know that and they think, why should I give this power away to somebody? Right. You're only doing it while you can't do it yourself. And to advocate for you. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the proxy does. But you want to be able to tell your agent, your health care agent, what you want for care. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we're stressing is it's really not the agent making decisions. They're really just taking your decisions mm -hmm. and telling your doctors mm -hmm. about it and telling your family. Well, um, although, as you pointed out, mm -hmm. one of the, 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 the reason why I hate, I hate, I dislike the term living will is mm -hmm. because people hear the term right. I'm going to do a living will and they think that that means they're doing something that's legally binding right. and while in many states li so-called living wills giving these kinds of directions regarding your care are binding mm -hmm. they're not here mm -hmm. so everything is about the health care proxy so when people are signing documents called the famous five wishes and many mm -hmm. people may have heard of the five wishes form or other kinds of forms mm -hmm. the only thing about that document that is legally binding is the first section of the five wishes form in which they're appointing the proxy mm -hmm. everything else is just advice 
although very important advice in many cases, mm -hmm. to that proxy because no medical provider is going to listen to any of that or read it. They're just going to want to know who's the proxy. That's right. And, and so, the other piece yeah. that I would, uh, would also add is that just the context of, because I'm kind of still a young person, context of a living oh, will. Oh, compared to us. <laughs> I didn't say that. You drew that it conclusion. Just, you know, they, everybody Mr. under about Bertrand. 50 now just looks young. <laughs> and so, so, but living will sort of implies to me, like will, end of life, something like right. after that oh, I'm yeah, here, yeah, that's right? True. Yeah. So I, I yeah, think it's really point. important for our viewers to understand, and, right. and you know, maybe you can not put you on the spot, but give us some examples of like, you know, what what's in a personal directive? Like, what are and, yes. and maybe sort of across mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. couple of minutes, um, the continuum of someone who's very young versus someone who has you know a terminal diagnosis right. yeah. and kind of how those might differ. Well, that's why it's exactly why we we renamed this living will thing because there's a lot of names for it in Massachusetts as a personal directive. To your point, Arthur, is to say this is a personal document. It's like a letter mm -hmm. to your doctors, to your family, and so to, that it and to your and to your and to your pro proxy and to your agent, to the proxy to say, right. saying, right. yeah, look here's at, how I want to be treated. That's right. Here's what's mo and it has two two parts. It's not just about the treatment because mm -hmm. we can't always predict what that's right. going to be. Right. But the first page is it's easy. It's just you know what's important to you. What makes life worth living? Mm. How do you define quality of life? Like if I got sick tomorrow, mm -hmm. well, what would I want my healthcare agent to know about what I wanted them to tell my doctors about? You know, what makes a good life mm -hmm. for me? Um, people have used this first page as just thoughts and reflections to mm -hmm. put down their spiritual beliefs. Sure. Um, you know, that that's important to me and mm -hmm. who to contact. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I want you to contact this doctor or I want you to contact this neighbor or right. my clergy. Or right, clergy. so for me, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. I don't know if yeah. this would be yeah. uh, something yeah. to put in there, but you know, if I were incapacitated for a long period of time, mm -hmm. have the ability to see my dogs mm -hmm. would be really important to me. You, know? you would be amazed how many people talk about their animals. I shouldn't say. I didn't say my That's, wife first. No, no, that would no. be a problem, right? <laughs> it's just, that, it's can just we edit the reality. The tape? No, it's just the reality. It's all. No, but that way, that's the like a, a very non-medical, but something really, very personal that that yeah. I think you know, even in an incapacitated, that I might yeah. find soothing. Yeah. That's right. You know? And it's not. And it's not yeah. a. It's not a medical decision. No. But it's the kind of personal. thing that the person it's who is your care. proxy, who yeah. right. Right. It, right. It, it, right. And to that extent, it is a medical decision. It really is well, about no, but, your but care. You, no, but that's you're right. The, no, the you're technical right. term of yeah. I do yeah. or I don't want, you know, um, mm -hmm. um, you know, enteral or you know, uh, sustaining treatment. treatment. Or that, yeah. That's yeah. obviously very clinical. Right. 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 And we do that on the second page, but we we actually flipped most living wills to say, you know, let's just say what's important to me. Mm. Right. And it's so so interesting when we do this um, together, what people share, mm. um, and we have a lot of our senior folks now just talking to each other yeah. about what's important yeah. and that experience about life and mm -hmm. what they've learned mm -hmm. are they're really helping each other yeah. with understanding what's a quality yeah. piece for me so you do that on the first page you fill out as much as you want you mm -hmm. come back to it anytime you want mm -hmm. and change it it's you your change personal it. document and, it, and that doesn't yeah. need to be witnessed or no. notarized or right. anything exactly. and, and I know for a lot of my folks because mm -hmm. we have these conversations and I've tried to bring up honoring choices and in some of the, quite a few of the seminars last year, mm -hmm. and I just talked to him about it. And, and so, in terms of, you, know, you have a stroke, mm -hmm. or you know, you have a disease that causes dementia, and things have gotten severe. So, so now it may be that this proxy that you thought you had done mm -hmm. just to take care of end of life, right. maybe help need this person's. You're guiding a person through what could be mm -hmm. years of your life, right. at least mm -hmm. months, but maybe years. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it goes to that question of, so what is really important? Right. Because a piece mm -hmm. of the decisions that that proxy is, that is then making is not, how are you going to treat this disease, but do I want to treat that disease? Right. If, 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 the, mm -hmm. if, I, if, if I am in a, in a condition mm -hmm. where, where, where what I think is, a, it, where the quality of my life mm -hmm. is, in my opinion, mm -hmm. not a quality that I think is especially worth continuing, mm -hmm. then not necessarily the proxy is not going to. I'm not saying go shoot me. Right. Well, because it's the wrong state, I, so I, I can't do that here. But 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 I can say, you know, mm -hmm. if I get if I get cancer, right, I don't want to go through a whole lot. Right. You know, right. if it turns out that I'm only going to be better to a point where I don't want to be in the first place, right. 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 which is just really. I mean, that sounds kind of hard hearted, mm -hmm. but it's it's and, and for the kids, I think it's hard hearted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But for the seniors, seniors get this. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's like seniors get, I'm going to die. Guess what? I'm old. I'm going to die. 
and, and, and but there are these other these but it's the question is what's the quality of the rest of my life right. well and I you think know? you know I, I go back to you know when my grandmother she got into her um, mid 90s and we had a lot of conversations she was forever dying at you know for 10 years um, which you know sort of became one of those yeah, things they, you know with like love a, and affection right, but right. Graham is still here for Christmas <laughs> yeah and um, how does she do that? Um, but we had she and I had um, a very you know, kind of intimate conversations about, you know, dying and, mm -hmm. and, but I wasn't her healthcare proxy. Mm -hmm. So she could, and she could speak to kind of, here's what I do and I don't want, I don't want any pain, I don't want this, what have you. Um, and thankfully we had a great family relationships and that her daughters, you know, kind of worked cooperatively together, yeah. mm -hmm. which, you know, is not always the case mm -hmm. to make sure she had a, a very, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a, a positive end of life experience, if you will. Um, but that doesn't always happen. And, and I, not as her agent, I could talk till the cows come home, but I, even if she had a personal directive and I wasn't that person, mm -hmm. you know, it would yeah. be very difficult to kind of connect those dots and then guide the treatment or, or her, mm -hmm. her care. Right. So it is, it is so important no matter where you are on, on the spectrum of your life. Yeah. And yeah. one of the things that's been marvelous about the, the personal directive is, you know, the truth is we don't all have agents. We are living True. a whole lot longer. We don't have sometimes family that are local or family that we are close to mm -hmm. to be able to feel comfortable. Right. And sometimes we, we talk to seniors and lots of people who have so many family, they actually don't know who to pick right. as an agent. Good point. So, or they're afraid to pick one. That's oh, right. I don't want to leave so-and-so out. That's right, right, right. That's right. You know? And right. as they think about that, what we say very clearly with the Honoring Choices tools is, look, you don't have an agent, no problem. Mm -hmm. Just start your health care plan with the personal directive. Mm -hmm. Oh, because, now that's an interesting thing. Yeah. yeah. And so you can start to think don't, about don't, it, right? Don't, don't no, not put in yeah. what, how you want to be treated just because you haven't figured out this one that's, role. That's actually right. For that one person. And it's yeah. been working. Yeah, yeah. It, it's really interesting as we travel the state for the last five years that we assume that it's just seniors who don't pick agents. It's been every age group from 20 on up, mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. type of person. It's just the society we live in. And so what we want to say to people is, that's okay you don't have an agent. It's fine mm -hmm. for now, you know, and even just, but what you have is a right to make choices. Mm, so important. And you want to write that down in that yeah. personal directive. The other great thing is, is, I would say maybe five years ago, the doctors weren't so sure they wanted to take that document mm. and put it in the medical oh, record. Put it in the file. Just but they're doing it now. Yes. Because they're coming up against patients, especially in our hospitals, mm. they've never seen before. Mm. And they don't know anything about that patient. Sure. And then there's no agent to call. Mm. So they actually like having that proxy to learn a little bit about the person who's, yep. who they're treating. Right. Right. Now, isn't that an interesting point? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That that, yeah. that the assumption when you went to the hospital, right? In my local 20 hospital, years my ago, local doctor. It's my doctor. Right. They, it's done my family, and they know they they're, so they're just kind of intuitively going to know kind of how I want right. to be treated. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's just right. no longer the case. So you're saying that um, individuals could take uh, the healthcare proxy. Mm -hmm. They could take their personal directive, mm -hmm. give a copy to their physician. Absolutely. Any of their physicians, right? So or if they're all. seeing multiple, uh, any and all, right, right, because most <laughs> yeah. of us are not just seeing that's one. Right. Yeah. Um, and um, do you recommend that those documents are also that the agent also gets a copy? Yes. Hi, tell us about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And again, this is what we go back to with Honoring Choices. This is your right. These are your documents. We've actually taught people that they're not their documents, that other people control them. Oh, sure. You should have a right. You should have a copy on hand so you can make changes. Mm -hmm. Right. What we say is, you know, you own it. You can change it you can anytime And you can you revoke want. the health care proxy at any time. You can Absolutely. tear it You can up. pick yes, somebody sir. else. Yeah. Say, I don't like that daughter anymore. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to kill me. <laughs> I want to. I want to stay alive, or alternatively. Yeah. Yes. And, right. and I suppose that's a, that's a, also a piece of kind yeah, of the sure. decisions mm -hmm. when you were just talking about right. the when you have multiple kids. Right. Is you 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 need to say to yourself ultimately you know mm -hmm. so who's really going to honor my choice? That's right. Well, because sometimes they don't. Good at you get that. one right. that doesn't, right. or that just freezes up. Right. I'm not going to be responsible for my dying. Right, right. right. It's not going to be yeah. on me. Right, well, right, well, right. Great. Well, you know, some Unless people are going to be really good about you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, this person clearly can kind of handle my financials in the first. And when we That's started right, talking, financial. and they're going to be really good at that. But that person would not be good in sort of maybe a, an emotionally charged situation mm -hmm. where. Uh, little right. life and right. death situation. Uh, right. right. Do you want your accountant making the decision on whether you're going to live Probably or die? Not, well, yeah. maybe. No. We actually have <laughs> a, a, a tax benefit. No tax benefit. No, 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 no,
We also have a little club that there's a lot of folks who have very happy marriages where women say to me all the time, uh -huh. my husband is never going to be my sure. proxy. Because yeah. he, he couldn't loves make me, the decision. Well, he couldn't make the hard decision. Yeah. And yeah. so that's fine to know. Yeah. And so what typically happens yeah. is there's a daughter or a son, yeah. there's a friend, yeah. and the yeah. husband gets included, of but course. then they, they, they help each other. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and I love those stories because people are really thinking and talking sure. to their family right. members about you know how can we help each other. Sure. Now, now I just mm -hmm. as, um, go, no, please go ahead. I was just going to say just as a curiosity now. So you've heard those stories mm -hmm. just a jillion times. Mm -hmm. Are there any that really strike you that when you that when, you know kind of you, you say to yourself now now here are some things that were in the directive right mm -hmm. that were just really important that really helped somebody down the line you know. Yeah to do something in a different way. I'm just curious. I'm well, just curious. I, I think I, I just heard from my son, who's an ICU nurse and an emergency room nurse recently, who calls me at all hours of the night because he knows Get I'm advice. up. Get <laughs> <laughs> advice. <laughs> he knows I'm up. Yeah. Um, so it goes back to this, this gentleman um, who was, I think, in his 70s, lived alone still very well, uh, actually was in his 80s, had a major medical problem mm -hmm. where he was rushed to the hospital um, but when he got there, mm -hmm. nobody knew who he was. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew if he had documents or family. So one of the things he had done, he had done a healthcare proxy, mm -hmm. he had done a personal directive, and he had filled out the little wallet card. Oh, tell us about that. <laughs> I love this part. Yeah. This There's is great. a little wallet card that says, if you do your healthcare proxy, you know, that's the legal document, right? And mm -hmm. then you can put in a little wallet card that says, I have a healthcare proxy. And on the back is the name of your agent and their phone number. Right. So and they and found you've actually produced these little cards, yeah. right? Cars so this, you you told us yeah. about this, and we're like, this is the greatest tchotchke yeah. that I've exactly. ever seen. Exactly. This is People like a like really. We, we went back to the old school. Put it in your wallet, because yeah. in the in the emergency room, they can't always open your phone. They can't right. always have your phone. Right. You know, but they might have a wallet or a pocketbook. Right. So to back to your point is he called me to say, Mom, you're not going to believe this. Oh, stop it. But there's a card, and we were able to find his daughter oh, immediately, wonderful. who was his health care agent, who was incredibly grateful because oh. she didn't know her father was that sick. Right. right and he was right. very sick sure. at that point. So she was able to quickly go to the hospital mm. with his health care proxy wow. and his personal directive and make these very mm. personal decisions. Mm. And they had talked a long time yeah. about... You know, I want my daughter to take care of my animals when I'm, you know, so yeah. it's one of the first things she did yeah. was yeah. after she left Who's the hospital. Yeah, right. It was to, of course, yes, feed the all. cat. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry about me. Right. Right. Feed the cat. Feed the cat. <laughs> exactly. So very, so those directives are very helpful to yeah. the person who then is in the trauma of I want to yeah. help my dad and also what do I do first? Yeah. You know, yeah. what's what most important right. to him? Right. So. And, and, you know, I think so, it's so mm -hmm. important. So I love the card idea. So even if, you know, e whether, even if it's not the Honoring Choices card, if someone, what I would say to viewers, if you have a healthcare proxy and you can go to honoringchoicesma.com, mm -hmm. yeah. correct? That's right. Um, and um, download the healthcare proxy form and the personal directive form, mm -hmm. you just um, print out something and put it in your wallet that says, I have a healthcare proxy right. and here's the person. So even in lieu of that card, um, yeah. um, right. because yeah. you're right, because some people you can't, even if you have an ice on your phone, yeah. if someone doesn't know your password or how to get yeah, in, it's, get it, in. it's, you know, they may not know yeah. that. Um, and, and I think that, that, you know, from your, from your perspective, Shelby, the fact yeah. that this came up in the course of the dementia friendly community yeah. stuff, just was so appropriate, you know, because sure. while the goal is to have everybody have one, there are some populations that are just more at risk, and the older you get, the, the more at risk you are yeah. of any of these possibilities occurring. So the notion of trying to, to, to that just building that in so that you know that if you end up with serious memory loss and you can't remember what this stuff is, or you can't remember exactly, right? right? right. It's all done. Exactly. It's all done. So it's just one of those things that you can Peace just put it to bed. And not just, just peace of mind bed. for you, so much of it is peace of mind for the caregivers oh, the who surround you. And the kids. Yeah. You know, your wife, your spouse, your kids, what have you. It's it's so important. It's um, you know, uh, I know folks, you know, pre plan their funeral and that sounds sort of morbid, but you know what, mm -hmm. there's such peace of mind for folks. It's like in a time where people mm -hmm. are grieving and they're worried about all that, you know, and it's you just want, so yeah. this you is want kind of my kids analogy. To be going to the funeral yeah, and I mean whereas, stuff you know, out, it's you like know? I've kind of already got it oh, it's like okay, well we can kind of, you know, grieve together and be together mm -hmm. you know, and so 
back up to a, a health care crisis, mm -hmm. this really will help families. So I think that we'll, um, Westboro will hear more about honoring choices as a component of the Dementia Friendly Initiative. Um, certainly, um, uh, Arthur and I we'll are resources. Oh, absolutely. We'll use her as the, con right. Absolutely. We, the, because I think this, we talked about really trying to make Westboro, one of the communities that's really leading this, just be a great absolutely, idea. Just absolutely, absolutely. So and, mm -hmm. and totally consistent where with where you and your group really want to go in terms absolutely. of the dementia friendly community. Absolutely, absolutely. So thank you so yeah, much, thank you. Alan. Thank you. This is just pleasure. great. Yeah. It was just great. We really appreciate it. We'll hope that you'll still come back to of Westboro. Of course, and kind we'd of, love to work and, with and, here and, in Westboro. And, and visit us here. This is going to be a lot of fun. And I think it really is kind of inspiring to know there's a way to do this. If, a lot of people would say, oh, this is a great idea, but how would we do this yeah. exactly? And it, this gives you, yeah. a, you know. And I think the, just the one other parting piece is just, I think it's so important that people talk about it. It's not always a comfortable conversation. So right. um, I know you've had some experience with um, proxy and pies or mm -hmm. pie po proxy <laughs> parties <laughs> or pizza parties. Pizza and but proxy. We're having you know, a lot of parties in right. the state. We're eating a lot of pizza. Right, right. right. Well, people you know, come in and have pizza and do a proxy. Yeah, so I mean, I think even if folks say, hey, I've got a, you know, my uh, book club, you know what, before we open that book next week, right. uh, we're going to download those forms. We're going to have a conversation and just mm -hmm. even even talk about it. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it's a simple Pirates but such an important... Pirates of Penzance and Pride. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> On that bright <laughs> note, that note. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for watching. I hope that this has been, this has been helpful for you in terms of understanding some of these issues. Mm -hmm. We will look forward to seeing you. <laughs> on our next uh, installment of Frank and Mary in Westboro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you both.